In the 90s, Brett Cantor was Hollywood royalty, a music executive who was brutally killed. The investigation went cold, but could his death be tied to the O.J. Simpson case? It's all part of a new podcast series out now. Here's an inside look in DBL's True Crime Chronicles. Brett Cantor grew up in the heart of Hollywood with his family. His father, Paul, was a well-known music manager who helped guide the careers of big artists like B.J. Thomas and Dionne Warwick. Following in his father's footsteps, Brett went on to work with Chrysalis Music Group and helped discover legendary bands like Rage Against the Machine. He was also part owner of the nightclub The Dragonfly in Hollywood, where celebrities often visited, and it's where he met his girlfriend, actress Rose McGowan. At just 25 years old, there was no slowing him down until one mysterious night changed everything. It was July 30th, 1993. Brett was seen leaving a club in Beverly Hills around 1 a.m. 24 hours later, Brett's brother found his body inside his apartment. He was brutally murdered, his throat was slashed, and he had been stabbed multiple times. It's been almost 30 years and Brett's killer is still out there. Could the conspiracy theories be true? Is Brett's case linked to the O.J. Simpson trial? In 1994, one year after Brett's death, America was glued to their TVs as police chased O.J. Simpson. He was accused of killing his ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and Ron Goldman. Their bodies were found with very similar injuries to Brett's. Nicole was also a regular at the Dragonfly, and Ron worked there as a waiter. Brett's murder case came back into the spotlight when OJ's defense team argued the similarity of the three killings meant it was the same person and not him. OJ was acquitted of the murders in 1995. For now, both cases remain a mystery. So what really happened? It's all being dished in the new true crime podcast, Dragonfly. Brett Cantor murder mystery. Earlier, Tori and Al spoke with the creators of this new podcast to get an exclusive first look. We are joined by the co-creators of this brand new podcast, JC Nova and retired homicide detective Pat Tapia. Your podcast launches an investigation into the cold case and murder of Brett Cantor, a well-known music executive in 90s Hollywood royalty. JC, no one has touched Brett's story in years. So what made you wanna bring it back into the spotlight and do this podcast? Well, I actually um, met Brett in 1992 when I was in college. I worked at a restaurant called Damiano's and he was one of the nightly regulars there. And um, obviously when he was murdered, it just really shocked us. And we were so surprised that uh, more attention wasn't paid to it because he was very high profile. And next door, Patrick moved in next door to me at, at the building that I lived in. And I had asked him about the case. I said, is there any way that you could like check into it and see what's going on? And that's kind of how Dragonfly was started. It's been almost 30 years, 30 years later, and Brett's case is still cold. Pat, you've worked in law enforcement for decades. Why do you think this case has been so hard to crack and who do you think did it? There's several different rabbit holes you could go down to. And uh, there's a, a lack of cooperation from a lot of people back when Brett was murdered. And without a solid motive or some physical evidence of who might have been the perpetrators, those are really difficult to um, investigate. They're very difficult to solve. Yeah, cold cases are notorious for that. Pat, what are the ties between Brett's murder and the O.J. Simpson case? And do you believe that connection kind of hurt or actually helped Brett's case? Well, first of all, there's really no connection other than a stabbing instrument was used in both murders. Mm. Um, I think that uh, Brett's case got overshadowed by the notoriety of the O.J. Simpson yeah. case, along with several other things that happened during the few years that that transpired after Brett's murder. Yeah, that makes sense. Now, JC, you spoke with Brett's family and friends. What was the most shocking thing they shared with you in the podcast? And has Rose McGowan or any other celebrities spoken out about Brett? There was quite a few shocking incidents. We know that he got a phone call at 2.30 in the morning. And then at 3.30 in the morning, 
Um, the neighbors heard him yell, um, help, help, please don't kill me. They didn't call the police. Uh, his body wasn't found until 24 hours later by his brother Cliff when he didn't show up for work. Rose McGowan has done a lot to move the case forward. We were really surprised to know that there is actually a person of interest. Um, the case was reopened in 2006. We're kind of thinking that Brett either found out something that was going on at the club or something else and that uh, in order to silence him and make him cooperate or go along with the program, he was visited by these people who killed him. You've got yourself a new subscriber for sure in me. The Dragonfly Brett Cantor Murder Mystery Podcast is out now. To listen, just search for it on your favorite podcast player. Pat and JC, thank you for publicizing this case so it can get the attention that it deserves. You all are heroes for that. Thank you for being here, and we'll be right back. Thanks, guys. Thank you.